What's up everybody, Leonardo2003 here, and we're back with part three of our Rise of the TMNT line one of action figures, unboxings, and reviews. These are the six figures that we've already reviewed, so if you missed those videos, go check them out. Today, this is the villain edition. For one, Baron Draxum. He just looks awesome. His color scheme, he's got his Hugin and Munin, or however you pronounce their names. He's got his sidekicks. Some mosquitoes. He's awesome. We'll save him for last. Origami Ninja. Perhaps he works for Draxum. It hasn't been confirmed yet. Pretty much a basic enemy for the turtles. And Meat Sweats. So I think we're going to start this off right now with Meat Sweats. He's the tenderizer. Meat Sweats, the tenderizer. Once a human celebrity chef, Meat Sweats is now an incredibly strong mutant pig with a menacing meat tenderizer hammer and arms made of strange tendrils that latch onto other mutants to absorb their power. His species is a pig mutant, and his weapon is the meat tenderizer that you can see right there. Meat Sweats is pretty awesome. Using that tendril, he can just suck ooze and powers out of other mutants. So for instance, if he stole some of Donnie's powers, he'd probably become like a, a genius. Or if he stole Raph's powers, he'd probably get Smash Jitsu. If he stole Leo's powers, I don't know, he'd probably be really funny and do one-liners, so. That's an example of his powers. Now let's unbox them. If you want me to go through this pamphlet, that's pretty much a big advertisement of every single turtle in this line, all of the figures, just go into part one of this series where I reviewed Leo, Raph, and Donnie. And I also explained these things, kind of. They don't really do much, these codes. Pretty much a code you type into playmatestories.com and I think it's kind of a gimmick, not too sure. I am gonna try it out, see if I can get anything cool from the codes, but I doubt it. Here is what you get with Meat Sweats. So first off, start out with this, I guess, his tenderizer. It's a plain color, it's just gray, so nothing special there. Kind of just like a regular weapon. And right here, this is his tendril. Or I guess they're calling it his tendril. It actually doesn't look like this. And here's Meat Sweats, and I want to show you guys this tendril. So his right arm, you can actually pull that out, and it's got a little peg hole where you can put this on there. So he has two different hands you can use, either a gloved hand or his tendril. Again, it doesn't really look like his tendril in the show. It looks a lot cooler in the show. But yeah, here's Meat Sweats. He looks pretty menacing, you know, his eyes are uh, really cool. He's got a chef little apron on. He's big and bulky, so articulation isn't gonna be his advantage point or anything like that. His, uh, looks like just his thighs will move up there by the waist. Do a little elbow action, a little shoulder swivel, and some articulation too. His head can turn a little bit better than some of the turtles can. Not, it can't go all the way around, but you go from side to side a little bit. Kinda hard, but look at this guy. He just looks huge. He looks awesome. And he's ripped too. He's fat, but you can tell he's muscular too. Look at this guy. He does look pretty menacing. He honestly looks more menacing than the Origami Ninja and Baron Draxum. He just looks crazy. He just looks psycho. Like, he's psycho on a different level. He wants to eat you. That's a different kind of psycho than kind of taking over the world. He just wants to eat you. <laughs> That's crazy, but there's a nice zoom of him. Now, we're going to take a look at the Origami Ninja. Here is the Origami Ninja, a.k.a. Confetti Commando. Looks like he comes with some type of weird throwing star weapon along with like a axe type thing. I don't even know. The Origami Ninja. The Foot Clan is a group of evil ninjas bent on taking over New York City. They have the power of teleportation through hidden gateways and the ability to create and control Origami Ninjas. Species Unknown Mystic Power Teleportation. I wish that they would have came out with the, um, the Foot Brute and the Foot Lieutenant because I definitely would have bought them too, but I guess they're saving some stuff for line two of the figures. But let's pop this guy open. He still looks pretty damn cool. So here is what the Origami Ninja is all about. So he comes with these three things. I mean, 
not too sure what they expect us to do or these kids to do with these toys i guess they go they're like throwing stars but i don't know it seemed kind of pointless to me and then right here it's kind of like a hatchet or an axe type thing with two blades you can kind of bend these or whatever not that bendable actually which is good and we got the origami soldier so he is pretty cool Definitely skinny, skinnier than the turtles. Almost as skinny as April, but not quite because they got this big build on their chest. Got articulation, got some uh, some spherical articulation on the, uh, the rotation on the um, thighs. No knees and no feet, but they do have the pegs, which I'm assuming you can kind of use either on the skateboards or on the sewer layer playset. Got the elbows and the wrists and the shoulders. Not the head though, the head. Oh, actually, nope, there you go. The heads actually twist a lot. See on the back, pretty basic, cool basic figure. Probably some kids are gonna want like three of these guys just because they're throwaway villains. So there's usually never just one of them. Like Meat Sweats, there's only one. Draxum, there's only one. These guys, there's unlimited. As long as paper is available for the, uh, the lieutenant, he'll keep making these origami ninjas. And there are multiple origami ninjas in Rise of the TMNT on the show. I definitely expect some more origami ninjas different variations to come out as Rise of the TMNT goes on. So here's a nice little zoom in of this guy. He's very hard to stand up. His One of his feet is kind of like one of those feet where only the toes are touching the ground and the heel is elevated. So I mean this guy is very hard to stand up. Took me about a minute's time just to stand him up. But his weapon does fit in his hand pretty nicely. But I mean, I really don't know what they want us to do with these little things. <laughs> I mean, the throwing stars, they actually fit in your hand. And they look cool, but these things, they're just, they don't even look right. So maybe I'm missing something here. Doesn't seem like they attach anywhere on this guy. They seem kind of like, just like little hokey things to throw in there to make it look like there's more cool stuff in the box. But really, only this weapon and the ninja are what comes in the box. Those other stars are pretty silly. But just to show you guys how this guy falls over, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, I can throw one of these things at him and it'll probably knock him over. So let's see if I can do it. Oh, wow. He stayed up. Try it one more time. Oh, wow, I missed him. All right, last try. There we go, knocked him over. And now it's time for Baron Draxum. Here we go, guys. There are eight figures right there that we've already unboxed. And now it's time for the grand finale of at least the figures. Mr. John Cena himself, Baron Draxum, the maker of mutants, the main villain for at least season one of Rise of the TMNT. He's got an awesome design, that dark red hair, that green and light green look and he's got some gold too. I mean, he's just awesome. The Uskitos are cool. His little uh, servants are cool. They're pretty funny in the show too. All right, let's read up about this guy. Baron Draxum, an alchemist warrior mutant from the hidden city. Baron Draxum is the self-proclaimed protector of all mutant kind. Baron Draxum plans to mutate all of humanity with his insect-like creatures called Uskitos. Species is unknown. I'd like to know what species this guy is because he just looks awesome. And his weapon, <laughs> I guess, is just the Uskitos. That's what it says, so that's what we're gonna go with. And there's an awesome picture of Draxum with Hugin and Munin on his shoulders. So let's open this crazy villain up. All right, so here is what Baron Draxum is all about. So first off, we've got the Uskitos right here. Just one simple color, you know. They can't put detail on everything. So they just made them all green, a tealish green color. So they all look pretty cool. Pretty much they match Draxum's cape. Pretty much use the same color. And you can see you can kind of clip them on Baron Draxum's shoulder or his hands or wherever you want to clip them. So we'll play with those guys a little later. I feel like this is Hugin and Munin because one of them has blue eyes, one of them has red eyes. Even though this guy looks kind of like a silverfish, just a little bit. But I think this is Hugin and Mun Munin, fun names to say, because they just have different eye colors so it can distinguish between the two of them. So they just give me that kind of a vibe. And then here 
is Baron Draxum. And then he's got two other servants on his shoulders. I don't think that these are Hugin and Munin. I think that they are just random servants that he also has. And wow, you can't even take these guys out of him. If you can see that, they are um, strapped in there. I, I did not expect that. I figured you'd be able to put all different guys on him. Put the Uskitos on his shoulders. That is not meant to come out. Definitely not. All right, I'm not gonna complain because this guy stands up really well. <laughs> a lot better than the Origami Ninja. Oh wow, look at his articulation. His whole knee can <laughs> invert or whatever. Nothing on his ankles or his toes or anything like that. He's got the elbows, the shoulders, thighs, and definitely no articulation on the head. So limited articulation with him. He honestly seems more of like a figure that you'll wanna display and just have standing up because that's just kind of how he is. He's really good at standing up. He's got the cape to help balance. Oh yeah, I'll show you the back. Looks like a total girl from the back, but see his cape, long violet hair, spikes on his arms, awesome color scheme. I would have done the exact same thing as the teal, the gold, the purple, really good color scheme. They nailed Draxum's design and he's got those purple eyes with the yellow pupils. So that's really cool. It's a nice close up shot of him. So right there is a nice close-up of Draxum. I got the Uskido on one of his wrists. They hang on there pretty well. It'd be nice if he had a weapon. Just one weapon. I get that he has Uskidos and they're pretty damn powerful, but I feel like he's someone that would benefit having like a really awesome staff with something really cool at the end, like an amulet staff or something like that. Something all powerful that would really suit him well. But he stands up really well as you can see. Now that we've unboxed every single figure, we're going to do a massive height comparison and just compare them all, see the, what's different, see the pros and cons, whatever. I'm not really a master reviewer, like I've said through these reviews. I'm just a TMNT fan unboxing some TMNT figures for some TMNT fans like myself. So let's compare all these crazy figures. For starters, here are those three villains that we just unboxed. You can see they're all pretty similar in height. Actually really similar. Meat Sweats is, I don't know, I'm gonna call it a dead even tie pretty much. I can't really tell who's, uh, who's taller. They're all pretty much the same in my eyes, but obviously Meat Sweats is fat compared to the other two. Now let's get some turtles in here. As you can see, Raphael is probably about the same height as most of them. Actually, Raphael is a little bit taller looking at him with the naked eye, but the rest of the turtles are just a little bit shorter than these villains. Donatello's, um, you can't even see Donnie. I'll move Donnie up, but uh, Donnie's goggles make him almost as tall as the villains, but these villains are definitely bigger than the turtles, so. Yeah, the villains are at an advantage. Now we can just throw a Splinter in there along with April. And why not throw Mayhem in there as well? So I'll do a nice little pan of all these figures. See all the heights, all the widths. Splinter and Meat Sweats are definitely the fattest followed by Raphael, but the three villains and Raph are definitely the tallest ones. So I want to thank you guys so much for sticking with me through these reviews and unboxings. I haven't really reviewed them all too well, I've just kind of said how cool all of them are. Because they are all really cool. If I had to give a favorite, I don't know, it's hard because there's so many. If I had to give a favorite turtle, it'd probably be Raphael, just because he's so big and so dense. But Leo is really cool too. If I had to give a favorite ally between April and Splinter, I'd go with April. Even though Splinter has that really cool weapon, April has Mayhem, so. But they're both pretty much tied. And then the coolest villain, I'd have to go with Draxum. But Meat Sweats is a close second, because I don't like how Draxum, you can't remove these guys off of him. That'd be cool if you could, and you can put the Uskitos on his shoulders. Maybe I'm just not ripping those things hard enough. I'm sure you could rip them out if you wanted to, but you can tell that they're kind of not meant to be ripped out. So if I had to pick a number one favorite, I'll just go with Raphael and Leo, followed by Baron Draxum. I guess that would, <laughs> that's my top three right there, but they're all really cool. 
definitely worth eight dollars and some change for for each of these guys and next episode next video you guys are in for a treat because i'm reviewing the turtle tank that's right guys the turtle tank Whew. that thing is awesome i'll be able to show what all of the turtles look like inside of the tank so that's really cool but here's a look at all of line one for the main line of figures for Rise of the TMNT. Thank you guys so much for watching and sticking with me through my amateur reviews. Next up, we got the finale of the Turtle Tank. So, peace out, everybody.